Chairman. Um, this is also a conditional use request um, for property located on the other part of town. So in single family R15 located at 2110 Jerry Jones. As you see on the map on the screen, this is about the midpoint between Alden Avenue and Guarto Road. Um, in the midst of single family land, as I call it, it is all known single family residential and certainly the land use patterns. That is reflected also in the character area map, which is established residential. Um, here, the image on the screen shows more detail of the central property, uh, which is a little bit unusual. It is larger than most lots. It is a little over one acre, um, dwelling just under 2,500 square feet. It has a large circular driveway, um, access only onto Jerry Jones, um, and a pretty good sized carport and parking area off to the side somewhat of an isolated large lot. Um, site plan in your packet shows the proposed parking layout, at least for the existing pavement. I um, emphasize this is existing pavement that's already there. Um, it's showing six parking spaces in the back, plus to a very large carport area that will hold four vehicles, plus the driveway. Um, so a dozen to 15 or more cars can fit on the property. Um, again, 1.1 acres in size. Floor plan, for reference, um, is in your packet. The applicant is the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, it is classified as a fraternal organization. Some of you may recall that they went through the same process <coughs> in 2010 for property on Bay Tree Road, uh, where they operated for a number of years. Um, as a conditional use, it was approved with conditions. Um, some of the history from that still carries forward. In about early 2010, uh, Valdosta State University approached the city and requested that all fraternal type organizations, that would include fraternity, sorority houses, and some of the church um, student centers, such as this one, or Baptist Student Union, um, be on properties um, adjacent to the campus, and more specifically, as indicated on an actual map, that the city adopted as part of the ordinance. Um, that property on Bay Tree Road complied. Most of those properties on the map were sort of on the west side of campus. Um, the university acquired the property that they were in, forced them to move. They set up an office use in Remerton. And I think since then, they've been looking for a little larger home to call us home base. Um, also, the nature of their business or their operation has changed. They were affiliated with Valdosta State University, which is why the first location, they will tell you they are no longer affiliated. Um, their focus now is on high school and middle school age kids rather than college age. So proximity to the university is not something that they're looking for. However, the city's regulations remain the same. In order to apply for consideration on this property, they went through the public hearing process with the Zoning Board of Appeals last month and were approved um, a variance that would allow them to submit the conditional use application for this property, uh, which is not indicated on that map. In other words, not next to the campus. And so that's how they got before you today. So again, R15 zoning, the same type of organization, just not adjacent to the campus. So in your packet, you see the site plan, the floor plan, Subject property, as you see it from Jerry Jones, um, very wide ramp style house. Um, the house looks larger than it is. It's actually very wide. Um, view up the driveway, also from Jerry Jones. Um, some of the vegetation around the perimeter is what I call the South Georgia jungle. Um, some of that is in place. Adjacent properties across the street, another single family residence, also on a large lot, and some of the other residences nearby. These are actually to the rear of the subject property. You notice on the map, Tom Wall Street has a cul-de-sac circle in it that touches the subject property, but there is no driveway access there. Again, other residences on Tom Wall behind. So before you is a request for conditional use permit for a fraternal organization in R15 zoning on the subject property. That is their proposed site plan. Um, staff thought about this very long and hard, not sure, not convinced that the variance would be approved. There was a lot of mixed um, feelings about that in terms of the regulations that were put in place. 
However, as a footnote, that variance was barely approved. It was vote was two to one with one abstention. Um, That's what I would call a squeaker as it went by. The chairman, I thought, was going to have to break a tie. Um, but nonetheless, the variance was approved. Generally, this is a non-residential use. Um, staff is concerned about residential character, and not only of the subject property, but certainly the Jerry Jones corridor. Uh, we certainly do not want encroachment of non-residential uses. However, as you know, institutional uses, such as a church and other things, are possible in the residential zoning district, usually depending on the nature of the subject property, also depending on the types of conditions that may or may not be appropriate, but generally intended to make the use compatible. Um, staff's thought process with this one, if this were a smaller lot without all these features, staff would be very much opposed. If this were in the middle of a single family neighborhood on a quiet residential street instead of Jerry Jones, staff would be very sharply opposed. Um, but this is a little bit different, mainly because of the size of the property. And with a lot of limitations, a modest institutional type use, I think, could work here um, as a good neighbor. And that is reflected in staff's recommendation, um, which is defined consistent with the comprehensive plan, consistent with those conditional use review criteria in your packet, and recommend approval subject to eight conditions. And they are as follows. Number one, approval shall be granted in the name of Fellowship of Christian Athletes only to utilize the existing building and adjacent grounds for administrative office and meeting space, as well as passive or light recreation. The existing building shall maintain its residential character, and there shall be no building expansions or new accessory buildings installed. And just to emphasize, there's a lot of questions um, related to this at the variance hearing. Um, and the name of Fellowship of Christian Athletes only means only for them. Other fraternal organizations would not be eligible. Okay. Number two, all parking shall be off street and located on existing pavement only with no pavement expansions. There shall be no vehicular or pedestrian access to or from Tom Wall Street. In other words, the site as is, all parking on existing pavement, no additional pavement, therefore the site limits the number of vehicles that can be on the site at any one time. Number three, all uh, install perimeter landscaping along with a minimum six foot tall solid opaque privacy fence along the entire western boundary as well as at least the westerly halves of both the north and south side yards. So as you see on the site plan on the screen that the top is the western boundary so that entire length and then the north and south property lines the westerly halves of that. Um, the property is 217 feet of road frontage and I think it's up 280 feet if I do the math quick 90 feet of on the western side. So a lot of perimeter area. All right, fencing and planting along the other halves of the side property lines would be deemed optional. The density of existing and new vegetation along these boundaries shall at least be comparable to that of a 20 foot wide buffer yard in accordance with the LDR requirements. The landscaping and fencing design shall be approved in advance by the city arbors. Number four, there shall be no permanent signage on the property's exterior other than non-illuminated wall signage that does not exceed a cumulative total of 32 square feet and one incidental freestanding yard sign not to exceed three feet in height and three square feet in area. There shall be no banners or other forms of temporary signage allowed. Those are the same rules as a residential properties are allowed to have or an institutional use in a residential zone. Number five, daily hours of operation shall be limited to within the time frame of 6 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Six, all outdoor lighting shall be residential in scale and shielded from all adjacent properties. Seven, there shall be no outdoor speakers or other amplified or mechanical outdoor sound systems. Eight, conditional use approval shall expire after two years from the date of approval if no certificate of occupancy has been approved for the facility by that date. Uh, the applicants are here. I think the whole neighborhood might be here again. 
but I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Matt. I'm just curious why you feel the need to put the six foot fence in there on the western boundary. It's it's all grown up anyway. Yeah. Um it helps ensure isolation of this property from the neighborhood. It helps ensure the lack of access. We're keeping, we're keeping it with, with the residential appearance. Correct. Yeah, I think that's the whole thing to keep it a residential appearance. I, and I know fences on red. I just, I just hate to put that condition. They have to be like, just here. I'm just, I'm just speaking freely. It, again, it's to isolate the property from the neighborhood and yeah. perhaps uh, avoid the temptation for uh, extra people to park on that cul-de-sac okay. and walk into the property. Okay, and I'm just really curious. I know I've been by that that property a gazillion times over. Time I've been here, and I would think somebody's had a party there before. And but we, but with this particular situation, we can't have an outdoor speaker. That's the recommendation. In other words, quiet residential there. I, I get that. I'm just saying, there's never been one before. There's never nobody ever had a sound system outside here before. We don't know. I guess my question would be in that regard to that particular one. Do the, is that in that neighborhood or the same restriction put on the residents there? Mm -hmm. It's more. No. It's tighter. It's what? It's tighter. I tighter mean, than that. Yeah, because 830, uh, if you're a resident, I mean, there's nothing that says you can't play music on your patio. Well, that's what I was asking. Is yeah. It, does it apply? Oh, okay. And the difference is the use of properties. Right. You know, a household right. would have one group of people. This potentially, mm -hmm. if you read their letter, you know, they had board meetings, 15 board members. The population of this property, on occasion, would be much higher. And Matt, if you're on number three, Matt, um, I just want clarification. I, I, I can read it, obviously, but you're asking, is there a separation for the fence and the, the planting? So you're asking for a fence and planting, or just? It's all part of one landscape plan uh -huh. that the city arborist reviews. The quantities are determined by the city's buffer yard requirements for a 20-foot buffer yard. The existing vegetation gets full credit toward that. Okay. Uh, so in other words, there's a mixture of some fencing, some vegetation already around okay. these parameters. I just want to say so it, right. It's hard to describe all that in detail in words. The idea is to put it on a plan. Very good. The tent is stated. The city arborist reviews it. Okay. Thank you. They're not a limit on the number of people that can gather at once. No. Um, they have to be able to get their cars, park their cars on the pavement. Correct. The concern is the number of vehicles on the property. Knowing that on occasion some um, school age kids might be dropped off. Hard to keep account of that. But in terms of how the property appears to the outside world, number of vehicles, and it was there. Keeping in mind, and this is part of my thought process, 10 of those parking spaces are behind and to the side of the house, not very visible from Jerry Jones, at least because of the distance. So all you have is a circular drive, pretty good size one. Um, remember, this is, and it's not mentioned here, but it's in the city's residential parking overlay district. There's houses in there or are limited to no more than five vehicles in the front yard. And that applies to single family homes. If approved, those same rules would not apply to this property because it would no longer be single family usage. So hence the limitation of vehicles. Okay, thank you. Any other questions before we open up? All right. Uh, is there someone, sir, um, that would like to speak on behalf? I'm Bobby Willis. I live at 3509 Breckman Drive off to Georgia, and I am the area director for FCA, the Fellowship Christian Athletes. 
And we're pursuing this property because we need to refine and advance our ministry. Uh, we need a larger place. We have to have an office right side of the Waffle House on the basement. That office complex right there for, I don't know how many years I've been with it, since about nine, and you can see before then. It's a, a free office complex, and we've enlarged our staff. Uh, it's time to enlarge our ministries. Now, we did have the house at the college, and as Matt stated, uh, that house that we were leasing was uh, sold to the university system, so we had to move out of the house for two reasons. One is they, they didn't tear it down in about three years, and the other is it was an old home that had a mold in it. Uh, I got uh, Frankie Gabe was clear to get the mold out one year, and he told me if the roof was not replaced, it would come back. And the college when they bought would not replace the roof, and the mold came back, so uh, I opted out of the house. Um, going on what Matt said about the college, we are not walking away from the college. We, are, we, we won't be close to the college, but we still may have small group Bible studies with the college students, but that will all be supervised by a chaplain. They will never be in the house alone. It will never be more than six, eight college kids. They also could come and maybe do some studying in the house, uh, but we will have staff there all the time. Donna Jones is with me today as my minister's assistant, and she will be at the house if any of that's going on, if not myself. Um, we have contacted all of the surrounding neighbors that you're seeing in packet that uh, touches that property, and they have all of the that they were fine with us getting the property. Um, it was mentioned that we had board meetings there. We have board meetings 10 times a year. We do not meet in June and July. Those meetings will be from 12 to approximately 1 and 115 once a month. Uh, and that's the only time that we would have an influx of adults coming in. Anytime any student is in the house, they will be supervised. There will be no students at any time in the house by themselves. They will either have a team chaplain with them or a staff member will be there. We do not even desire to have an outside music, none whatsoever. Now, previously this property was rented and it was rented out to college students, which destroyed the house. <laughs> 